welcome back nail queens today i'm going to show you how i swatch my dip powders on these coffin swatch sticks that i got off of amazon so these are clear but you can use any color and style that you want i just prefer these so i'm going to pull out my swatches and the way i like to swatch is i like to go by like color family if possible so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i need to get started on labeling so i have a brother p touch label maker i purchased this off of amazon and i really like it once you figure it out and you can get your settings down it's so easy to work with so i'm going to start typing in the names of these dip powders starting from right to left and then I'm going to print them and show you how I cut them and typing it in is really easy I have settings on the font and the size and spacing that I like so the way I have mine is not the way the default printer is set up you have to set it up yourself so I like my swatches to have clear backing on the labels and white font. You can do clear and black font, whatever you want. They make like black labels, yellow labels, red labels. They make labels in almost every single color. So I have it all typed out and now I'm gonna print. So I'm gonna hit okay, wait for it to print. And then I'm going to use this green button here at the top and I'm going to cut it just like that. And now I'm just clearing the feed. So hit shift backspace tab over and I only clear the text because I don't want to clear my format and I have these cute scissors that my girl Shay sent me and I love using these to cut my labels so they all come out in one strip that's why I have to cut them down and that is what I'm doing right now so I pull back the backing and then I cut where the name starts for the name that I want to put on my swatch and I do this for every single swatch stick and I just place it right there so you see it has a clear backing which matches the color of my swatch and white font so it may be hard for some people to see but i prefer it that way so i can see it up close and personal so i'm just labeling all of them and that's what they look like after they have the swatch labels on them by the way i'm using nine millimeter tape they sell 12 millimeter that's the standard but 12 millimeter is too tall for my swatch sticks and then I take out cupcake liners because if my dip powders flow over, it flows into the cupcake liner and I salvage all the powder that may spill. So the first thing I do is I apply dip base to the underside of my swatch stick. Now this method is something I learned from Miranda's Nails Creations and she has a video that talks about three different ways that she likes to swatch or that she knows how to swatch. So definitely check that out, but I'm only going over one of the ways, which is my favorite method. I'm swatching the underside and I'm pouring over my powder because these are coffin swatches. They're very long. I can't just stick it in the jar, but if you had shorter, smaller swatches, you could. Now I'm taking that dip base and I'm doing it to the top side. So you might be like, why did you swatch the under and the top side? Now Miranda, she taught me this. You swatch the underside first and then you do the top side just once. It's going to reduce the amount of bulk that you have on your swatches, making them look more aesthetically pleasing. Since I do YouTube videos, I take pictures and stuff like that of these swatches often, I want them to look the best and most professional that they can. So that's why I like this way. And of course I can do the dips on the underside. Look how smooth that turned out by the way. I could do all the dips on the underside, but I have a method to my madness because of the way Miranda described it. So I'm using my cupcake liner to salvage all the powder that spilled out and I'm pouring it into the jar and I'm going to close that up. Now with glitters, I do mine a little bit differently. Of course, I'm going to swatch the underside the same way I did the solid. I apply dip base to the underside and I'm going to pour over the glitter onto the underside. If necessary, I like to pat down the glitter into the bottom side of the swatch. It just helps the glitter really stick to the base so much better. And I'm dusting off the top side with a little brush here. This way, when I put my base, I'm not grabbing any glitter pieces. So this is what this looks like. And honestly, it looks great. So if I wanted to, I could activate and top coat the bottom. And here I would have a perfectly good and done swatch. Although some people have said that if you only swatch from the bottom, they notice like some color differences. I don't know if this has something to do with like the style of plastic their swatch is made out of. 
So because of that, I just swatched the top as well. So I'm applying dip base to the top of my swatch stick and I'm going to pour more dip powder into the cupcake liner and I'm laying my like swatch flat into the cupcake liner. The reason I do this instead of just pouring over the way I did the solid is because if I poured it over like I did the solid, most of the chunkier pieces do not grab onto the swatch. So if I lay the swatch flat into the powder, it grabs the chunky pieces. I don't know if it has something to do with like the concaveness of the swatch, like the style of it. So that's why I do it this way. I'm applying dip base into random spots around the nail swatch to adjust where the chunky pieces are because I want a good representation of all of the elements that are in this dip powder. And I know I haven't shown it here, but after this is all done, I let it air dry, usually for hours, just because that's my personal preference. Then I will activate and gel top coat my swatches. So here's what the solid and the glitter look like side by side. So I'm going to repeat the same process, but with two other colors. So you can see that this is what I consistently do with these styles. So I'm going to start with a solid and I'm going to end off with a glitter just like before. So just like before, I'm going to do the underside first. And I always recommend doing the underside first because when you apply dip base to the top side, you already have a guide of how far your dip base sh should go to. Because if you do the top side first, it's very possible that your brush or your dip base may end up getting onto the handle of the swatch stick. And if I'm being honest, if you're someone who really cares about like presentation and stuff like that, getting it on the handle does look kind of messy and you don't want dip base where it doesn't belong. So on this glitter, I have to add more dip base and you may find that on the chunkier glitters, you have to manually place the chunky pieces into different spots because it didn't pick up so well. And that's not abnormal. You, you wanna say hello? Hi. I'm not sorry for the kitty interruption, but that is it. Don't forget to top coat your swatches after you're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. And here's the gorgeous kitty who interrupted our video. Bye.